The media blackout of the certain candidates is very real. We're talking Bernie Sanders and Andrew Yang. Plus, we're looking at CNN's ranking of the Democratic candidates. We're going to tell you what's, what's a little bit wrong yeah. with their analysis. A little bit off. You'll be <laughs> shocked to learn. <laughs> Joining us via Skype to discuss all of this and more is Katie Halper, host of The Katie Halper Show and co-host of Useful Idiots, a Rolling Stone podcast and one of my personal favorites. Both yes. Katie and the podcast are <laughs> great. Um, Katie, great to see you. Thank you. You guys, too. Hey, Katie. So you had a big interview this week with um, Andrew Yang, and you asked him specifically both about his not getting called on in the debate until like 32, 32 minutes, minutes in, and then also the way that he's been treated in general by MSNBC. What did he have to say to you? Well, they talked about how, you know, they called him John, for instance, once. They called him John Yang. Uh, the big thing, though, is that they actually apologize. That's what is so weird uh, for people who follow MSNBC bias and its treatment, for instance, of Bernie Sanders. Um, uh, and they didn't apologize enough to Yang, but it was just amazing to actually hear someone acknowledge that they had done anything wrong. So I guess MSNBC did apologize for calling him John and not Andrew. But I'm kind of uh, damning them with faint praise, I realize, because they didn't apologize for leaving him out of graphics, which they do. Um, yeah. I guess if they called Bernard, like, um, you know, Howard or something, maybe they'd apologize. But, well, uh, it's it's funny, Katie, because they delivered a personal apology. They didn't actually apologize on the air like Yang uh, like Yang had demanded. And I, I I mean, here's the thing: like, it's not just the graphics. I mean, not calling on it during the debate, not basically acknowledging the reality of his campaign. The man raised seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars in a twenty four hour period. I mean, Joe Biden wishes <laughs> for those numbers, right? So just like he here's the thing: all that we, all that people want is fairness. They want acknowledgement right. of a very right. grassroots real phenomenon here it's it's crazy right. yeah i mean i i know and i i've said this before but i appreciate that you get outraged about this it's not about even liking the candidate i mean there's a lot i like about what yang says but that's not what it's about it's just about how ridiculously entitled and lacking in all accountability the media is and it's so disturbing it's like you feel like you're living in an alternative universe or you're being gaslit constantly and there's no acknowledgement of it. And, you know, I really admire people who are principled who say, regardless of the candidate's politics, who are just like, we don't want someone being totally blacked out. Why is this happening? And it's not okay. Yeah. And, it's bad uh, for everybody. I guess it must be nice for Bernie and Andrew to, to have this shared uh, blacklisting. At least they're not alone. Yeah. They're both totally uh, <laughs> out together. It's to have yeah. a buddy. Yeah. Well, and they're both but, lucky to not be getting the treatment that Tulsi Gabbard is, at least. So there's, at least right. there's that. Yeah, true. <laughs> um, but, but what it... You know, this media loves to elevate voices. MSNBC is very committed to diversity. And if oh, you're yeah. a woman of who has foreign policy critiques, all of a sudden you're totally vilified. And, and the treatment of her is also very sexist. I mean, there are all these tropes about how she's dishonest and sneaky and... It's very disturbing. So yeah. Right. Well, how was the rest of the interview, though? Um, you kind of had this funny like back and forth where you were saying the Yang Gang that they were impotent and powerless and cowards or whatever if they couldn't help you get Andrew on the show, but they delivered for you. They did. Sometimes it's funny because Andrew, you know, Matt Taibbi, my co-host, is obviously this very well-respected, prolific investigative reporter who you know came up with the term, you know, first called uh, Goldman Sachs the vampire squid, um, and I think he and Yang are fan like are fans of each other's and that somehow didn't make it that we still couldn't get him on the show and then i had to go out there and, and say yang gang where are you what are you doing are you guys at, do you have any power at all or are you just in front uh, i had to also a circumcision i'm not gonna lie yeah. uh, i know yang is very openly um for circumcision choice right. um and i was like you know i'm gonna don't make me form a bris <laughs> You're hilarious. That's funny. Well, the Yang Gang, as we all learned, is very powerful. They delivered, yeah. indeed. Yeah. So um, this this caught our eye as well, and I know it did you too. P PBS did this whole, like, long 13-minute segment all about let's look at the 2020 primary. And somehow, some way, they managed to get through all of that without mentioning Bernie Sanders once. We had um, Bernie Sanders... Uh, the campaign co-chair, national campaign co-chair, Senator Nina Turner, on the show this week, and she reacted to that. Let's take a listen to what Nina had to say. 
These networks are wired only to care about the upper middle class and the ultra wealthy, and they leave out the narratives right. of the working poor in this country. That's it's right. caste and it's class, and because the senator is connecting with both of those, see, they can't tell the same lies they told in 2016. Mm -hmm. So since we don't, we can't you know, just make that part up, we'll just not talk about him altogether. It is wrong, and I would say that about any candidate. So basically she's saying, look, last time they, they dismissed him because they didn't have any black support. This time they can't do that, so now they're just going to ignore him altogether because they have no, nothing else to do. Right. And of course, he did not have any black support, but that was the narrative in 2016. But now the demographics don't at all lend themselves to that, right, to that narrative. So they can't do that. And it's funny, like I think Nina pointed out in your interview, what happened to that being such an important litmus test? Why aren't people talking about the, you know, unprecedented Latino support for Sanders? I thought these people cared about this. Um, it's just so blatantly, it's so opportunistic. But yes, it's like there are two ways that you can um, mistreat Sanders if you're in the media. One is that you can like unfairly vilify him um, and, and perpetuate this stereotype that's not even based in reality of him being this out of touch old straight white man. Um, and the other way is you can just ignore him. So we're seeing yeah. more and more of that ignoring because they can't use that other stuff. Um, and it's, of course, this was so blatant, so it's good in a way. I mean, I, I say this a lot in your show, thank God for small favors, like the media is so sloppy about it. But of course, what's often scary is that when someone's omitted from something, you may not notice it because they're omitted precisely. Right. In this case, it does stand out because there were so many other people who were, you know, discussed. But. No, that, that's, yeah. that's what omission really is. I mean, and, and, and look, and again, from my perspective, how can you possibly run a 12-minute package on the Democratic race and not talk about the number two, and in some cases, number one candidate? And, re and even regardless of that, this is the candidate who has set and changed the Overton window and set the tone of the entire conversation. That is media malpractice, and it's just not telling you the actual story before your very eyes. That's that's why I see right. this is so problematic. Yeah, but you know, also, Katie, malpractice. we, we want before we let you go, we want to make sure yeah. we get to yeah. our weekly Soliza. So we yeah. got to save oh, right. time for that. So um, this is funny. So of course, um, Kamala Harris dropped down of the way race yes. this week, which um, you know happened sooner than we had expected. There was a lot of conjecture that she may get out before she had to put her name on the California primary ballot. Well, she went ahead and pulled the trigger earlier than we thought. So that uh, occasioned a number of people to go back and look at the Saliza and Harry Enten power rankings from a year ago, which are hilarious. <laughs> Kamala, number one. Yes. Beto, number two. Then Joe Biden. Then Cory Booker. Then Elizabeth Warren. Then finally <laughs> Bernie Sanders and Amy Klobuchar and Amy Klobuchar, <laughs> which is um, just kind of yeah, just wow. kind of incredible. Kamala and Beto, he, they were the they were the ones that Saliza thought was going to be like the real go getters in this primary. Did he retire by now? <laughs> I, I just keep a job. Sorry, uh, sorry to say that. And and again, we, Harry Enten, he did, decided to do a Twitter poll where he asked people who they thought the most likely nominees were, and the top three choices were Harris. Um, Biden or Warren. He didn't even have Sanders in. And when he was out on that, he was like, you guys, oh, because the fourth choice was someone else. Right. And people, luckily, the vote was overwhelmingly someone else. But yeah. when people called him out on that, he was like, you guys realize there are only four choices on Twitter, right? On Twitter yeah. polls. Like, yeah, we realize that. And you could have had, like, the first to second ranking person in, in that yeah. poll. And here's the thing. Here's, it, like, yeah, it can seem trivial to like carp on this, but I mean, this is what they actually believe. Like these are like important people in the media who put out these things under the banner head of a multi-billion dollar news right. organization and with they offices it, around the and world. And they base it on nothing yeah. but like their feelings. Yeah, literally. It's like, it's based in nothing except ideology. Yeah, it's ideology dressed up as objective observation. And that is yeah. so dangerous. Like, look, I'll take a Jennifer Rubin, an insane Jennifer Rubin over this any day you know, with her weekly column about how bad Bernie Sanders is, I'll take that because she has an ideological bent, and we all know that. Um, and it's the it's the objective reporting that's so dangerous. And also, I gotta say, I want to thank uh, Chris Eliza for praising Hillary Clinton's interview uh, with Howard Stern oh. twice. Huh. Or twice for a piece about how great it was. Uh, I'm sure viewers, you talked about this, Agar, but yeah. Hillary Clinton. 
getting on television, I mean, getting on the Howard Stern show to blame Bernie for her <laughs> loss. Bernie campaigned harder for her than she did herself, um, more effectively for her than she did herself. And also, uh, you know, talking about sexism, I think Jimmy Dore pointed this out. You're going to go on the Howard Stern show to talk about sexism. <laughs> you're going to go on the Stern show to talk about, you're going to blame someone else for uh, Donald Trump's election. Howard Stern gave the man tons of free media. I'm not saying you should boycott Howard Stern. I'm just saying just be consistent in your narrative, Hillary. Don't go on Howard Stern to talk about sexism and, and Trump's um, unfair victory. Howard Stern had him on all the time. And guess what? Donald Trump talked about how attractive his daughter was on Howard Stern. Donald Trump talked about how he was able to go into the dressing rooms of the you know beauty pageants that he ran on Howard Stern. He talked about how women would lift their shirts in front of him. You can't no one's buying this. Well, I guess Chris Eliza is, but Chris yeah. Eliza is right. also buying well, this. I love Harris. always, the media is always yeah. telling us that if we just got to know Hillary, mm -hmm. then we would see how wonderful and great and whatever she right. is. So this was yet again. If we could just <laughs> see her, if we had just seen her in this setting, yes. then she would have won. Oh. Um, Katie, yeah. thank you so much. Thank you, Katie. Be a narcissist, uh, yeah. you know. <laughs> All right, Katie. Katie, thank, you, so thank you. Have a good one. Me too. We'll have more for you after this.